Good evening, my one fan. Hey, welcome back. I'm just uh, streaming uh, PC games and retro PC games, and I haven't streamed really consoles much. Uh, of course, yes. Full disclosure, this is emulation, so it's on a retro pie, but uh, for that purpose, I actually have it projecting on a CRT monitor or TV or a PVM in this case, so I guess it counts, but using an HDMI converter to actually spit out the signal one component and into my PVM and then capturing that. So the image is definitely not going to be as crystal clear as like emulation on a PC. Still messing with the settings and everything, but there's a lot of games I never played on um, consoles. I never had a Genesis or uh, Mega Drive, as to recall, in Europe where I grew up. So it's just a fun way to kind of explore some of the games that are on here and uh, see what's out there. There's so many games I never played. Um, of course, we can start with something that's more classic, like Afterburner. It's a good one to, to kick this off with. But I'm just going to kind of hop around some retro games on uh, Genesis, see if anything sticks with me. Any that are uh, fun or interesting that I might play again later. So if you have suggestions for Genesis games or uh, hidden gems on a Genesis or anything like that, let me know. There's obviously uh, obvious ones like you know, your uh, Sonic and, and all that good stuff, right? Those were really good games, but... I'll try out some different games I haven't played. Although I have played Afterburner a little bit. Certainly not good at it. Of course, uh, very inspired by uh, Top Gun and the like, so... I always found the Afterburner control scheme to be very weird and a little clunky. Ugh. Music is, of course, very good, so. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. But it looks cool. It was funny to me being a Nintendo kid growing up and everything. The uh, Super Nintendo had the Mode 7, obviously, it's so well known, but um, the Genesis didn't really have any built in scaling functions like that, so I think they're doing it all in software. There's plenty of videos and people better at explaining that than I am, but. Not good. Let's see if we can find any uh, interesting unknown uh, Genesis games in here. I had a very large library, and I haven't played much of it at all, except the more known ones like yeah, your Sonics and Toe Jam and Earl. I did play quite a bit. These days, if you want to play this stuff, of course, whoops, it is easy. Uh, Emulator is obviously an option. Um, then the quite excellent Sega Genesis Mini that came out recently was really good. Um, pretty easy to hack too, I think, just to add whatever games you want on there. I am just terrible at this game, does this seem to line up or make sense? I use this a similar scaling to uh what's called Space Harrier. You know, that kinda scaling into your face here. Do barrel roll, lots of barrel rolls. I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm pushing buttons. I think that they actually released this on like Master System too, which is pretty uh pretty gutsy. I remember playing it and it looked eh, not that great. It's also the uh cannon is autofire. There might be a setting for that, I guess, in the options menu. I just want to ride into the game. There, you can boost the speed, too, and slow down. Mostly feels like I'm just flailing around. into a little boring on hop to some platform or something. The 16-bit era, of course, was the uh, golden era of the uh, character platformers with edgy attitudes and everything. So, I'll we'll check out some of those, too. I even trying to hide the Top Gun uh, influences here. We'll go back to the RetroPie menu here. Let's see. Let's randomly hop around here and see. There's just so many games on here that I never played. I have no idea what this is, but let's try it. Devilish, the next possession. Never heard of it, never seen it, never played it. Maybe it's good, who knows?
Gotta have the uh, Sega logo, obviously. There was a prince and a princess living happily in a kingdom. But there was a jealous devil from the dark world named Y. Why? Why it turned the prince and princess into two stone paddles? Oh, well, that's not very nice. I wouldn't be one that turned into a stone paddle. Suddenly, a mysterious blue sphere fell from the sky. So much to take in so quickly. And that's it. Okay. Alright, let's go. Whatever this thing is. Let's go into options this time and see. Cross for the uh, demonic zipper there. Stock. Paddle formation. Paddle speed. Oh, is this like a... Stone paddles. It's like a breakout arcanoid. That seemed like a weird plot for that. We'll see. I gotta figure out the the capture of this because yeah, it's it looks a little blurry there, whatever. But it looks super sharp right now on the on the PVM, which is nice. And there are ways nobody has to scale it accordingly. I'm messing it enough to to figure out exactly to get the the right scaling. So it is a ball stock. So it is literally a. It looks really good. So it is Arcanoid. Oh no, they got turned to two stone paddles that have to... Well, that is a very convoluted plot for basically Arcanoid. Arcanoid being, you know, kind of like a premier breakout uh, game where you're trying to... Oh no, block, destroy, and whatnot. Aha! The button does something, but I don't know what. So, aha, I'll take that. That's pretty cool, I guess, but it's always struck me, um, when you're playing these things these days, you have access to like a million games, especially when you do this sort of emulation, right? There's, you can play every game ever known. And remember as a kid when you like, you got the one game, that's what you had, or you, you, know, you bought it, or you rented it, or you got it, or whatever, however you got it. That was the one game you had that time, and uh, if it was like a really crummy game, well, you were stuck with it. Especially these days when online reviews and everything is so easily accessible. The, the physics of this ball is really confusing me. It's going all over the place. Look at that. Oh no, my blue sphere. Rockin' uh, soundtrack, that was. Concept is neat, but again, unless you're in the mood for this kind of game, it'll probably get droll pretty quickly. The thing that always struck me with the Genesis being a Nintendo kid was that the uh, gritty Yamaha sound chip and everything is such a very unique. Uh, sound. Ow. Dang it. I'm running out of lives right now. Last ball. It's just, <laughs> you're looking at the ball, it's just randomly like flinging around. There's really no... We'll give it one more try. I don't know rhyme or reason to how it's bouncing, it seems like. Alright, let's try it one more time. But I sure am glad I got the backstory on these stone paddles, because otherwise, how would I have known? The story-driven breakout clone. Turn off the music a little bit so you can actually hear it. Production quality is really good, but again, I think what's really making it messed up for me is is the ball physics. Um, like I guess that they were trying for this kind of like uh, gothic style or whatever, but the ball is just 
behaving really erratically, and it makes it really hard to gauge where it's going to bounce. Like that. I'm just like, whoop, and it's gone. So that's challenging. Zip, zip. Where's it going? Where's it going? Come on. Come on. Aha. That's really cool music, though. It's like versus the, the Super Nintendo, which... And, you know, someone can correct me here, but as I understood it, the Super Nintendo uses sampled uh, music and sound effects. So that's why you have kind of like a typical Capcom sound, a typical Konami sound, and they'll use their own sound fonts, right? Versus the Genesis generated all in the Yamaha sound chip that's on board. So that's why all games for Genesis or Mega Drive uh, has the same type of sound to them. That gritty, dirty sound almost, but... Uh, Definitely going to say some of the music on Genesis is fantastic. But I also like a lot of the music that's on Super Nintendo. It had a very, it hadn't quite the same identity or unique sound, I guess, as the Genesis uh, did. And there. <laughs> Alright, well, a cool game. We'll go to the next one. Spin the wheel. If anyone wants to give a suggestion, let me know. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of really good ones, popular ones, but I kind of want to find the more weird ones. Like here, what's this? No idea. Dragon's Fury. Let's try it. So I'm a little bit out of frame here. Let's see if I can get into the picture better. The cat stole my regular chair, so I'm sitting on my backup chair. All right, looks cool. Whatever this is. Options. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is ball speed. Did I manage to pick a random utter breakout clone again? Left flippers. Okay, it's a pinball then. Okay, well, that's... How am I picking these, like, fantasy-themed, uh, like, ball games? Oh, my goodness. That is messy. So that's Tilt. I don't, oh, there's, I didn't know what buttons to actually control the flippers, so let's try this again. That's a pretty far out design here. Then one of my favorite, right, one of my favorite themed uh, pinball games is Revenge of the Gator on the Game Boy. Uh, I just played a ton, it was really fun, maybe we'll stream it sometime, but feel like streaming uh, Game Boy games just doesn't do it justice when it's... What is going on? There's so many things. It's so confusing. <laughs> well, it's doing something. Sure. There was quite a few of these, like, character or just story, but theme-driven pinball games where you have to, like, hop around like crazy like this versus just straight-up pinball, like, you know, a pinball fantasies or pinball dreams or something. But, yeah, it's... What is going on here? I'm so confused. Keep firing! Oh, never mind. Keep firing! It's funny not growing up in America too, where the Genesis, of course, was uh, much more popular than was in Europe. The Nintendo, or Nintendo, or Super Nintendo, and Nintendo reigned supreme. Um, I mean, not to say that the Mega Drive wasn't popular, but the Super Nintendo was outselling it a lot. So <laughs> here, the Genesis being like the edgy cho choice and the cool one and everything, and versus Nintendo was like you know toy. But try one more time, but the. Uh... Genesis never got the same foothold as uh, Super Nintendo. It's just Nintendo was just more common; didn't have as much distribution in Europe. Or uh, Genesis didn't. I knew one person that had a, a, a Master System actually, and that was that was very very rare. 
have a feeling it's pretty rare too. I certainly haven't heard many people like grew up with or had a Master System versus the NES. Seems like that was just reigning supreme here. If I remember right, one of the recent Genesis got a early foothold was that it came out before Super Nintendo, and you can kind of tell it's not. I feel the Super Nintendo has more uh, advanced graphics. Maybe I'm biased, I suppose, but Genesis was a early 16-bit system, whereas the Super Nintendo definitely came out later. That's the thing, I try and be cautious when I talk about, uh, boy, this game is hard, video game consoles, because I, I know quite a bit about uh, retro PCs and, and computer stuff like that, but there are so many people that have covered um, game consoles so much that there's going to be like a billion people who are experts at it, and I just know it from the peripheral. Which is why it's fun for me to explore uh, the Genesis library a little bit, because I just... It's something different for me, and... Uh, I didn't play much of them at all since we were kind of a Nintendo family. We had actually Nintendo for rental. Crown. <laughs> so I had access to a lot of, um, of my parents' business. So I had access to a lot of um, NES and SNES games later, but we did not have Genesis. So there was. Or Mega Drive again. So I had very little exposure to it. Uh, went to my cousin's place and we actually went and rented. This game is so confusing. <laughs> we uh, rented the. Um, Mega Drive for a weekend and play like Toe Jam and Earl. I thought it was so cool because it was just different. Um, I think we're hard pressed to say which one is better. I mean, gut reaction tells me spec wise the Super Nintendo was better. It had more advanced stuff, I guess. Probably helped by that Mode 7 scroll uh, and everything. But uh, they both have very diverse libraries, and one of the games I absolutely love, Earthworm Jim. Uh, I played on Super Nintendo, and I didn't realize it was a... Hey, something's going on here. I'd... Pinball, right? Yeah, woo! Uh, it was uh, a uh, Genesis first, and then a Super Nintendo, which I had no idea until I heard about it later. And um, Whoops. I actually saw a speedrun of it, I think, uh, at a GDQ event, just a uh, game's done quick. Uh, using uh, the Genesis version and like, oh, here's the part that probably people that played Super Nintendo version didn't know about and it's like, there's a whole new level and everything. Well, not a whole new one. It was cut from the Super Nintendo version, so. This game is really confusing. But again, using that rockin' uh, Yamaha sound chip to produce a very uh, distinct sound here. Goes with this demonic theme, I guess, pretty well. You can kind of tell, and maybe I'm making a fool of myself right now, you can kind of tell when some of the games were later in the uh, console's life cycle they have a little more, you know, more advanced use of graphics. Like, if you play Altered Beast now, it's... And it's Courtyard. Man, this game is so confusing. It looks really good, though. Um, like, I get a feel this is, like, more of a later title in the library, because you play Altered Beast now. Uh, yeah, you can tell it's a pretty early 16-bit 16 16-bit title. It's very rough around the edges. Life from your grave. High quality samples. Am I still in the game? Oh, That's my last ball. I'm doing really well on my last ball now. I swear it always happens to me when I play uh, pinball games on computers or consoles. Is that I just sink the first two balls and I have a really good run with the last one. Well, it was better. I'll check it out another game now. In case of bowling, we should fire up Altered, Altered Beast here now. Please enter your initial. I'm so edgy. So that was cool. Uh, so let's actually go to Ultra Beast now and see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. So go to the A's. There we go. And we'll see how, uh, how clunky this game is. Don't worry about the errors there. I'm trying to figure that out still. So it's, yeah, you, especially when you hop to like a later game. Like, uh, I know I played like Alien Soldier, which is a side scrolling, shoot him up or whatever. It's really good quality and everything, and it looks really good to play. But then you play like this, and it's. This is 1988, so it predates the Super Nintendo. I know it was launched in Japan, I think, in uh, 90. Rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. 
Shin kick. Ow. Shin kick, shin kick. <laughs> Punch to the face. Look at these graphics, the smooth gameplay. Roid up. Now, of course, this is someone's favorite game, and I'm making everyone mad, but it just, it, it doesn't hold up. Like, I think you might have fond memories. I think it was a packing game a lot of the time, right? Or in several uh, box versions. Uh, when it came to Europe, the Mega Drive, I'm pretty sure packed in Sonic or Sonic 2 or something. It, it stopped punching me in the face. That's not fair. Oh, oh man, I didn't get... There we go. Roid it up. So like buff is ridiculous. It's just so clunky to play. Like versus a game like uh, say uh, Golden Axe on Genesis, which plays really well, smooth, and is fast. This is just like uh, I'm walking through mud. And now I'm a werewolf that can fly across the sky for some reason. Ha ha! That's why I remember. Just I play this a little bit, and just for the. Uh, ability to do, do this transformation and then I was like done with the game. There wasn't much more to it for me. I was planning on making a video on it at some point, but uh, for... I am using a set a uh, HDMI component adapter to play. It took a lot of tweaking of RetroPie to get it to run on a CRT nicely. Mostly because uh, 240p is kind of out of spec on uh, HDMI. Whatever this thing is. Oh. That's right, we're gonna werewolf laser him. <laughs> Come on. I realize that I don't actually want to play this game that long, but I just wanted to kind of have a contrast, because, yeah, it's... Aha! And he's gone. Graphics improved a lot during the 16-bit generation. It was really cool to watch. For since we're emulating it, we don't have the dithering effect on what... Uh, the Genesis did a lot, I'm sure you watched it in other videos as well, is that it used to... Alternating pixels like that, uh, uh, transparent or not, to create the transparency effect. The sonic waterfall is probably the most common one that you hear about. When you're emulating it, it's getting pixel perfect. You don't get that uh, effect. If you do composite, you can. And the the RetroPie actually can output composite natively if you get the right cable. And at that point, it will be retained. So it would be an easy way to get a RetroPie to basically uh, play games like there were back in the day, right? You get a really old CRT you find on the curb, and you can do that. But that's enough Altered Beast, because, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that game. So, we're going to skip through uh, randomly here into another letter and see what we find. Go into the... There we go. What's this? Fighting Masters. Eh. Fire Shark. That look, oh, there's Flashback. That's a good one. We'll skip that one. Fire Shark is probably a size going shooter or top-down shooter. So we'll go with that. If you're uh, one of the people joining us later, we're playing um, Sega Genesis on a RetroPie. So, yes, emulation. I don't know, taboo. Um, but I have a um, HDMI component adapter hooked up so I can play it on a CRT or a PVM in this case and then also stream it. So, I seem to remember this one is probably a top down. Nice, it's got a very twangy. Uh... Oh, I need to. Yeah, my house on chip stuff. Nice sound, or sound. Um, also, the and again, I might be saying the wrong thing, so don't sort of quote me on it. But the, the way I understood it was that with the Super Nintendo using samples, uh, that's when it can have its own sound effects. But everything is generated on the Yamaha sound shifter, so that's why a lot of the explosions and things like that sound similar game to game on the Genesis or Super Nintendo. It varies greatly from the game. That's not bad. I mean, not amazing. I certainly played better top-down scrolling shooters, but not bad. Oh, nice sound. Whoop. 
Oh, these power ups are flying around. Or my favorite top down. Oh, laser is probably uh, Sweb or Super Silkworm. That's on Super Nintendo, but a friend and I play that to death, and we're trying to like. Like one of those games where like you got your buddy and you're just grinding through and you know exactly where every power up is, you know who gets what, and you kind of build rapport and that was a lot of fun because we like, you know, there was no fighting over the power up. We knew, hey, you take this one, I take this one, and that's how we progressed in the game. We got a little further every time. Uh, I'm pretty sure we beat it in the end. I think he didn't make it at the end there, so then I was the only uh, one left standing. Plane throw on an airplane. Well, why not? Powerful. Very powerful, good range too. Um, and if you haven't played uh, Super Silkworm or Swib, as it's called, um, it started out as a side scrolling shooter, but then it turned into a top down scrolling shooter. The cool thing, especially the Super Nintendo version, I think it's on Genesis as well, was that um, one player, or if you play with one player, uh, you can pick between a helicopter or a uh, car. So that actually affects you, because imagine in this game where you're driving on the ground instead of flying. So then one player was the helicopter, another person was the plane, or, or sorry, was the jeep, or a little tank, um, and you could cover each other. Some things would hit the would hit the uh, helicopter, but not the jeep, and then vice versa. So it made it for a more strategic gameplay, and it made it really fun to play two-player. To love it, but like many of those games, it's all about... I'm a little amazed how well I did there. <laughs> Uh, it's all about, uh, you know, repetition and learning where everything is on the stage and, you know, grinding your way to it a little bit better every time. Which can be rewarding in itself, but for me, a lot of the scrolling shooters, they need a, you know, tight controls, kind of given. Um, still decent graphics can help a lot if you see what's going on. Like here, I think it's pretty sharp and everything. And you can, well, probably not on the capture, sorry. I'll figure that out someday. Um... And then you also need compelling weapon sets, I feel. Because otherwise it gets kind of boring. If you don't have good weapon upgrades, you can bomb this guy to smithereen here. Alright. Uh, if you don't have a compelling weapon set, it's, it's not very fun to... Whoops. To upgrade your weapon along the way. And I vastly prefer uh, shoot 'em ups Shoots where you pick up weapons versus the ones where you select or something. Now that said, Axel and Super Nintendo was my favorite, so I did a video on it as well. Uh, which is the exception there, since you gain weapons every level and unlock it that way. But uh, I, I do enjoy a lot um, the games where you're picking up power-ups, because, I don't know, it just makes the chase of the power-up more fun too. The ones I don't like is where you lose all the power-ups when you die. Um, which this one seems to do, but that's what made me never progress very far in Gradius, because once you built up all the stuff in that, when you die and you lose everything, you're just screwed. It's so hard to recover from that. Oops. Alright, well, it's probably enough of that one. Do I have one more life? Last try. Also, uh, just give me a thing where I can hold the button to shoot fast. Punishing me that I have to keep pushing like this feels like a little overkill, but there are many of these games, obviously, and they all did it uh, their own little way. That yeah, cool. Uh, I seem to remember seeing. I guess one of this was even on NES, but uh, cheesing my way through that guy there. Pretty good music. When I saw this uh, game on the NES as well, never played it there, but I might be good. Too bad I'm never good at this one. <laughs> All right, fine. We'll try another game now. It kind of gets you know repetitive. I got to figure out. It looks um, very very sharp on the on the PVM now. Of course, a PVM if you haven't used it is a professional video monitor like a Sony one, um, usually that had uh, very high specs for broadcast media. Um, so, but the capture, unfortunately, isn't nearly sharp. So, I'm going to test that out a little bit. My gargoyles. I remember that was a. I seem to recall that was a kind of like a cartoon, Saturday morning cartoon that never really took off. So, and it's one thing the 16 bit era had. Uh, I'm assuming everyone agrees, because of course, I'm on the internet. Everyone should agree. Is that there was a billion, like, 
cartoon tie-in games in a 16-bit era. So this ties into them to that cartoon. 994 AD, Viking sorcerers have created an artifact of incredible power and evil. Tesseract? The Eye of Odin. Okay. Mad with power, Vikings, invaders, over and... Oh, okay, Evil Awakens. Didn't give me much time to read there. My attack. This then being probably a later Genesis title, because it looks really clean. Very good. Very clear. Nice animation. Reminds me of the, uh... The uh, Aladdin level of animation here. I go there. Go there. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is really impressive graphically. Very clean graphics. Oops. Blue jump button. I just want to check out the Gargle Car 2, and I'd certainly never watched it. Now look at those, like, animations. Compare that from Rise from Your Grave. Oh. Ow. Ow. something, whatever I picked up there. I need a little health here now, that's really hurt me. Huh. Whee! So, I can't go in here. No way to fall down here. I don't know what this button is. Stuck. Whoops. <laughs> They're really clean animations. That's not real nice. Stop ballistaing me in the face. Herbichet. That oh, was a ballista. Medieval warfare uh, naming conventions uh, matter. What now? Okay, um, cool. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. So that's, uh... Nice. Like a dive. Yeah, that was a really impressive, uh... the manual or the uh, energy to like google it and stuff to find out because I think there was like a, a roll of something. Excited to watch me fumble around with random games. I have no idea how I did that roll. Genesis has three buttons. Button one is this, or A. B is this, and then C is jump.
There we go. Uh, Alright, well, I mean, it's not bad for, so far, for a tie-in. I mean, it looks gorgeous, honestly. I can definitely see being happy with this. It's... Like I mentioned before, like, you know, you, you got the one game, that's what you're playing, right? But, and of course, many, many, many tying games were just truly awful, but this is not bad at all. It's a typical platformer or whatever, but yeah, that's not nice, dude. It certainly looks and plays really well, actually, pretty responsive. Too bad I'm just terrible at it, but... Oh, that's convenient. Really fast. Not a gamer soon. It's cool, but there we go. Ow! My goodness, get bombarded from every direction. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Or part of me wants to find crummy games. So this one's almost just too good. It's just a place like your typical, you know, character-driven um, tie-in platformer of the era, and it's not necessarily a bad thing here, because it plays very well. Take that, Vikings. I don't know where I'm going, but I guess I'll kill you all. Well, I guess that's where I was going. Cool. Alright, maybe we'll call on that one there, but eh, not bad. It's good to get to think of that one, I guess. I kind of want to watch the tie-in now. Or well, not the tie-in, but there was a cartoon called Gargoyles. Alright, we're going to hop to uh, Foot Brawl. Not a big sports uh, game, so we'll try Jewel Master. Looks like an early title, 91. Uh, probably a puzzle game of some variety. Let's check it out. Sega. I wanted to get a... Uh, Game over, yeah, t-shirt, but found one, but they were pretty expensive. <laughs> Once upon a moment in time, there was a kingdom known to all as Mythgard. There's a big story behind this. Mythgard pr prospered in peace until the first coming of the demon king, Jardine the Mad. I picked a good name. Oh, oh no, it's red. That means he's bad. Mythgard prospered in peace until the first... Oh, never mind. Leading his dark legion, Jardine was but a step away from obliterating the kingdom. Oh no. Generic bad guy. 
It was then that the twelve masters of the elements rose up to put an end to the Demon King's evil designs. Not to his evil designs. Fierce battle ensued until there remained but four masters opposing Jardine. Jardine, sorry. Pooling their powers into a holy blade, the four masters prepared for the... Okay, got it. What is this game? Sword. Four things. Jewel Master. Oh, wow. That's not actually... Now, this is more like... This feels like an earlier game, obviously, but... This is trying really hard to be Castlevania. Listen to music. Really cool soundtrack, but yeah, it feels very much like Castlevania. Yeah, wildlife, plants, orcs. The fire punch, y'all. My goodness. music. Ow. <laughs> really? Just like that, unceremoniously, you get to a three hit to game over. That it? Just from the beginning? Oh, three credits, so that's cool. But it's the very beginning of the game. Wow, it's one of those games. Thought it created longevity in some of these games back in the day. It was just like, yeah, it was brutally hard. Where are you? That sound progression there, or music progression, almost had like Vampire Killer from Castlevania going there. I think they took a little more than a little inspiration from that, but. In 91, I think uh, Super Castlevania was out by then, yeah. I guess it was a launch title, so yeah, it definitely was out. Look at that, you can have, like, different rings and spread. Wave, nice. Wave. That's cool. Switch weapons and... Oh yeah, I'm just gonna... Wave, wave. Now I can't see any, like, mana use or energy or anything. I'll just keep spamming this wave. And then once I get... Ah! Fire punch, fire punch, the crunch. There we go. Okay, don't... One... It KO me, man. That wasn't cool. Got quite a vertical height there on this, uh, this jumps like whoop. <laughs> that was not bad. I mean, I certainly could have like okay the the fact that you're dying, but I mean, again, it reminds me a lot about Castlevania. So I can see playing this. Definitely difficult, but uh, I guess the biggest thing would be just the amount of continues. But again, it was like a game like back in the day, you just Got a little better and got a little better every time you played, right? And then eventually, hopefully, you made it somewhere. Hello. 
was poor timing. Now I'm definitely going to work on the uh, video capture because it certainly looks a lot better. Now again, I'm playing on PVM. It's not going to compare, but... Um, Whoa! Ah! Game over. We're on the continuous and I see if it starts over me from this beginning of the stage, I'm not sure I'll play it again, but anyway, yeah, it's uh I got the scaling wrong on for doing uh 240p, which is what mostly yeah, no, we're not gonna be getting from the beginning. <laughs> most of these games from the uh NES or most of the older consoles like this output 240p which is kind of the old school uh, resolution. So we'll just scroll around here and see where we land on. Uh, probably not going to do any of the NBA games. We'll do golf. Eh, we'll try a golf game. Why not? Now we will play Let's Guess the Strength Gauge for Swinging into Golf Club. Every golf game seems to have a different way of measuring how far the ball is going to go. Some have, like, you know, just a simple, like, circle or something that you hit the red mark and it shoots it far. Some have, like, a thing that goes up. Some you have to, like, line up. And they all had their own ideas on what the perfect way to, well, hit a ball. Golf. Ever beach golf links. Oh, yes. Look at that gorgeous still image. Almost feels like I'm there. Double Beach Golf Links. I bet you didn't think when you tuned to the stream tonight you'd be watching a golf game on Sega Genesis. Well, maybe you did. But here we are. Oh, wow. This feels like a computer menu. But we'll do a quick start. Yeah, why not? We'll just hop right into it. I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay in this golf game. But we'll try it out. That looks pretty nice, actually, for being Genesis here. Look at that frame rate of, like, two. Did they have to do a full flyby with, like, the full rendering? Because... Come on. In there. Boy. It's just a PowerPoint slide at this point. <laughs> okay. That's okay. So. I don't want the credits. I'll wait for that to render here now. Wow. Cool. <laughs> there we go. There's the wheel. Whack. Not bad. I don't know where it went, but right where I didn't need it to be. And besides that really, really slow flyby. All right. Two hundred thirty one yards. Where it has like a little thing that's panning around to see where you're gonna hit it on the ball. When I play golf games, I usually just go full power and see how far I get and then try and correct with the mistakes afterwards. There we go. That was one happy guy. 110 yards. So how a 68 yards left, so... Oh, that was dead center. Oh, that is... I am pretty pleased with that shot. No denying. 
What a shot. A par. Whoa, I'm doing a lot better than I thought I would. <laughs> oh, it's really downhill. So, 18 feet. Go with a light tap here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. DSA here, I hate these golf games. I'm getting invested here. <clears throat> also, par, too. I never get par on golf games. <laughs> Awful lot of them. I'm almost shocked how, how close I got there. This is where I break out the Happy Gilmore uh, quotes or too good for your home. Oh, now we have straight uphill seven feet, so. Too hard? Yes. Plus one, hell oh well. I think that's pretty good. If you're joining in late here, we are playing random Sega Genesis Mega Drive games on a Retro Pi. So yes, it's emulation. Uh, however, it is uh, outputting HDMI through a component converter into a Sony PVM. I'm watching it here. Um, and it's uh, being captured from there. Hello, Caesar. Thank you. Yes, I am a big Mass Effect fan, so that's why I got the uh, N7 logo here. But you came to watch golf games on a Genesis, right? Right. Absolutely. All right, let's see if we can uh, wing this one as hard as possible. Ah, uh, it's not too hard there. Oh, it's pretty center, but it's not enough. Let's see where it lands. Poof! <laughs> distance. I got the distance, right? I'll have to uh, mimic the guys, like... Oh, man. Doesn't matter, we'll just go for power. Say all sports games on any console or whatever is more fun than there's a drinking ball, I think. Almost enough to make uh, football games for me um, more enjoyable. Boy, he is really concerned. Oh man, how am I going to get home now before my wife finds out I'm not playing golf again? One in doubt, full power. Whack! Alright, we're back on the fairway here. 107 yards. It's more relaxed now. I'm just going for max power in all these here. Oh, that's going to slice to the left there. Whew. There's a bunker over there. Uh, wedge that over there, maybe. We'll see. Uh-oh, he's, uh, he's upset again. Don't be upset, random golf guy, or mean player one. Don't make it. Uh, 33 yards, so how... Oh, I should have chipped it under there. Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah, surprisingly good. Sweet approach. Thank you, Mr. Mustache 90s guy. All right, we got a putt here. It looks like it's leaning to the left a little bit. Don't worry, we'll play this a little more and then we'll skip to some more exciting game, perhaps. But this is pretty good. I'm a little impressed by how many options and, and things you can do in this game here. Golf games varied greatly, I feel. Oops, we probably need to aim a little bit like this. Oh, too much. What? I think. Oh, I should aim that other mark I had to the right. Oh, come on. Who builds a green on a hill anyway? That's not fair. Huh. Let's see. Got one more. I guess I should say for the capture, since it is a little blurry, that's more like what you probably remember, right? Playing on composite and everything. You plugged in with the yellow cable, and that's what Genesis looked like. So maybe that's a little more uh, 
realistic then. We'll call that uh, 11 feet uphill. Too hard? Oh, come on. That was uh, a robbery there. Come on. Let's get this one ball in and then we'll switch to another game here. But now, now it's personal. Finally. Got a nice little, like, clunk sound effect there. Plus three. It's fine. No, it's I'm part of that game, so... Nice part about emulating it is that I'm just using one of these uh, 8 bit Doe controllers that have analog, dual uh, shoulder buttons and everything, and then I can play... So I have other emulators on here, but we're focusing on Genesis and I, but I have PS1 and Sega CD and um, TG TurboGrafx-16 and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we'll jump around a little bit, so... Road Blaster, so that looks promising. Another Tension game. Let's try that. I'm guessing this is a vehicular combat game of some variety, so we'll check it out. Oh! That's so loud. Radical music, though. Oh yeah, there we go. It looks like uh, Chase HQ. Controls A, B, okay. Sure. Oh, press start to exit, okay. So... How do you start? Start to exit is just... Um, uh, these are game options. Let's press start to exit, but then... Okay, it just goes back to here all the time, so how do you actually play it? <laughs> I'm missing something. The Genesis only had a few buttons. The start, A, B, and C. Okay, there we go. Start. And we'll do Rookie here. Wow. Holy cow, actually pretty advanced graphics here. Whoops. That's fine. I'll buff right out. Holy cow, he's turning a lot for as little as he's moving. So, do you do anything in this game except just blow everyone up? Pick up little green orbs. Alright, I got the red thing, whatever that is. Cool! I don't know what I did, but that looks cool. Shoot opponents for score. Got it. So it's just like a drive around, shoot everything. Which I mean, that's that's what it was trying to sell. It clearly wasn't. Uh, oh, dude, I. Okay, this is really bizarre. So I did not know what this game was called, but I just had a massive memory flashback. So years ago, obviously, when I was young, uh, we went to a uh, ski resort when I was a kid, and. Mines. Well, that's not nice. And um, I didn't really like skiing when I was a kid. Uh, not that I know how to now, really. But whoops. And uh, I uh, just borrowed mon money from my mom to. They had a little arcade in the hotel there. And uh, shooting accuracy increases multiplier. <laughs> I'm just gonna blast everything. Um, and they had an arcade machine that I just played with. I just made a friend there at the hotel with a kid that was my age, like you did it when you were a kid. And we played 
a chasing game like this where weapons drop down from the sky. I could have sworn it was like a police chase game, but I remember specifically the weapons falling down from the sky there like that just did. And I don't know if that's the same. I'll have to look it up after this is over if that's the same or not, or if that was like a chase HQ. I think it was chase HQ, but that weapon falling just jogged a massive amount of memory there. Whoa. Does not seem to follow the loss of physics here very well. Cool. It's flying through this. Just see how far you get, like outrun, basically. I don't know, that weapon falling down just seems... But I could have sworn also that that one game was... Um... Like... <sighs> Whoops. Fine, it's fine. It just seems like that weapon falling down there was just such a jog to my memory, but I haven't played Chase HQ in years either, so I should probably check if see if it's fine. I think I have auto insurance. Well, you remember getting a game like this, you know, not the specific game, but a game like this again, of this caliber, you know, so you're, that was your new game. And you played it to death. Doesn't matter how good or bad it was, right? Because that's the one you had. You will empty. Get the weapon. There we go. Nitro injector. Holy moly. Good thing you got the little, uh, NOS. I need more NOS, man. Yeah, so it's gotta be, I could have sworn that game I did play in that, uh, ski hotel or whatever was a, uh, you were chasing bad guys, if you will, and this is clearly just shoot everything. It's like you are the bad guy. Nice. Cap special weapon to increase performance. I did it with NOS. Oh, bikers. Whoops. Oh, I had a special weapon there and it blew up. Limos are unbreakable, I guess. Oh, mines. This a warns you, so that's nice. Alright. Yeah, we'll check another game now. It's just <laughs> repeat, repeat, repeat. So, you know, not to keep bringing up that point, but again, you got that game, that's what you had, and you just played it over and over and over. It's like, it didn't matter if it was repetitive, especially like during the 90s. I mean, there were so many games that were just like, not that great, right? We'll hop down here. Shove it, the warehouse game. You can play this, but... Moving boxes around. Not going to make it a long stream tonight, probably, but I'll... Uh... Check out a few more games here and then call it good, but yeah, it's probably a puzzle game. But I can't say I'm great at puzzle games, so you may see me fail many times here and you'll sit there and watch this and like, why isn't he moving that there? Obviously. Look at that animation. Beautiful. Game. Yeah, I think I played this in many iterations because you basically just have to shove the boxes around. Boy, this should get this guy a forklift or something. Not very good working conditions. <laughs> oh well, back to my box pushing.
I will make a fool out of myself on this one. There's just no way I'm not going to. I'm just never good at these puzzle games. I'm sure like many of these games, it gets hard really fast. It uh, reminds me of what uh, Lolo on the NES is also like a push things around game. That one I did play quite a bit. Yeah, I think I've had uh, half the bison. Um, I can't remember the last time I did, honestly, but I, sh I feel like I have had it. But I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I'm a beer connoisseur or anything, but I could have sworn I had that one. So I don't have any beer, but beer does sound good. Let's have a... Uh... There we go, we'll go with this room. Oh boy, now it's getting tougher already. See, now I'm like, oh my goodness. So that one I have to move. Then I pretty much have to move... This one like that. That one. Uh, I think I boxed myself in, no pun intended. Once again, pause. See, I told you I'm not very good at puzzle games. Pretty much have to move this one here. That one up there cannot go down, so this one has to move again. I can't do anything else here. So I have to do that. Now, I don't really have a choice but to move this guy. But what if I do... I need one over here, because... Let's do... Oh, I'm right back to where I was sucking up. It sense in my head. Now it's like personal. I have to figure this one out. And this is like stage room three. That's that's how great I am puzzle games. <laughs> oh, that one cut it. I can push two at a time. Nope. Ah, this chip challenge all over again. This is actually pretty funny, the fact that I'm just like incapable of solving this here now. Well, maybe you prefer me uh, watching me play golf poorly instead. Get it. Finally get it. Huzzah! That guy just goes back to pushing a box. Same music over and over for all eternity. Alright, forget about that game. <laughs> We're gonna skip ahead here to some other game. Spider-Man, the animated series. There, we'll go some uh, some licensed platforming game here. Man. Ow. <laughs> That's cool. I think it's Spider Man. Oh no, all the bad guys escaped at the same time. And they're huge! I mean.
What is this thing? It sounded like radioactive spider butt there for a second, but... I thought Ravencroft would be strong enough to hold the likes of Smythe, Doc Ock, and Green Goblin. Well, you were wrong. Yes, I was wrong. You were wrong. I better get to work. Taking some villain butt before they wreck my city. Ooh, this is nice and edgy, 90s. Well, that's fair and ceremoniously, just... I don't remember Spider-Man from the animated series in the 90s being so buff. I mean, look at that. <laughs> like Arnold of Spider-Man. Yes, I am the radioactive Spider-Man. So that's the whole point of this thing. Wow. Janky. The Goblins game was better than this. So yeah, here's a... What looks to be a fairly average tie-in here. Oh, great. I love when enemies respawn right in the... Can you not climb on walls? There we go. Oh my goodness, these controls! How do you cling to the wall? Swing? Ah! What is this music? This game is awful! I just want to get up there, is that so hard? Impressed by this one so far. Really? What is. I feel like they had the best of intentions here, but again, if you were a kid and got this for Christmas or whatever because it's your favorite cartoon, boy, you'd be disappointed. I can't jump up there. Boy, I wanted to give this a fair shake, but I'm not sure I can even... Oh! <laughs> there we go, it's got a whips... Oh, there we go! I have to go into the menu to switch it. Apparently the Fantastic Four is in there, too. Oh no, the basic minions defeated Spider-Man. He's doing a freak out and beginning of the stage again. So you really have to go into the menu to select your web thing. I guess the Genesis never... Ah, I just can't do it. That's awful. <laughs> uh, I guess the Genesis didn't have any shoulder buttons, right? So I will hop along... There's a volleyball. I'm not a big fan of that. Tecmo will jump up again. Oh, we gotta do some super off-road. Pretty classic. Oops, that's the wrong button. Like, uh, it's almost like a quest to find the crappiest Genesis games here now, but that uh, that was pretty awful. I know a lot of the, uh, you know, show tie-ins and movie tie-in games, of course, were just, just not very good. I think Goblins one was really good. Um, there we go. 
Dang it. <laughs> Just sluggish controls. Now, of course, being emulation, you're still contending with the... I don't know if sure, a... Nitro. In music. There we go. Power and some nitro. Where am I again? I'm red, I guess. Oh yeah, there's my nitro. Whoops. I also thought the physics in these uh, off-road games were pretty funny. It's like little matchbox cars just flinging around. Meh. You can see uh, what I mentioned earlier with the dithering on the shadows of the trucks here. Because the uh, shadows are like these little pixelated blocks versus the... It would have used composite blending at that point to make it look like an actual shadow. Because, I mean, think about every game console. They've been designed with a certain like video output in mind. Like, you know, modern consoles have HDMI, so whatever. But um, the games back then, or consoles were designed kind of like with the, hey, well, not out nos me, man. That's not fair. Wow. Just screwed me over at the end there. They got no money. Ten thousand. Neat. I'll buy one nitro. Kind of need to win these races to make any real money. That's right. I can nitro into you to get you get a boost there. Um, anyway, the uh, game consoles were kind of designed with a certain output in mind. The most common thing, which is like most famously for me, the Wii um, did not have like H HD capabilities, right? So it was 480p or 480i, which is what I mean most CRT monitors or TVs used back in the day. So that's uh, they were targeting the most the lowest common thing that people had. Versus then the 360, for example, is capable of HD resolutions right out of the bat, right? Alright, don't out-nitro me now. Nice, there we go. Got a win. Of course, that gives you more cash to buy more upgrades. So now we need more speed. Tires. Why some nitros? There we go. Remember, fun. These games aren't that hard. You just kind of keep doing this, and you keep getting better and better equipment and upgrades. And but uh, if you ever played this as a stand-up cabinet in the arcade as well, with like three steering wheels and a um, gas pedal and everything, is really fun. I know someone who has one in their basement. I'm jealous. Goodness, these guys are nitroing all over the place here. Oh wow, they have like 20 nitros, so I would see why. Nitros are helpful, but uh, not as helpful as like buying like a speed upgrade that just constantly gives you higher speed, as you can see, uh, see now, kind of pulling ahead. Whoops, or I screw everything up with the last second. There we go. Whew. That was a close one. And it just keeps going like this for all eternity, basically. But I'll do a couple more races and then maybe one more game and then uh, call. But I've got lots of cash now. We'll buy shocks. That makes this more stable. Uh, we'll buy another acceleration, another tire, and a couple nitros. There we go. Bam, bam. Better to get like these upgrades again. Nitros help you temporarily, but you know a higher speed all the time gives you much higher top speed, and you're able to kind of pull ahead. But I'm gonna nitro here now because they are catching up fast.
Nice. Definitely play this on the uh, Super Nintendo. Super off-road, but I think it's uh, on the NES too. It was on a lot of systems. And we'll add some more speed. Shocks. And more nitro. Whoops, I should probably pay attention to the game. Alright. Get the cash. It's important to grab that cash, because even if you don't win, then you get some money. But as you play, uh, they get more and more upgrades, too. I'm pretty sure, because now they're starting to really... Again, you get that tasty, crunchy Yamaha sound chip that you get in the uh, Genesis. Boy, they are just out. Whoops, and there we go. And I had a fourth place. <laughs> Record time. Yeah, he boosted his way through the whole thing. Alright, we'll do... Um... I think that this one of the versions that supports the multi-tap with some varieties, you can play four-player on it. Uh, it might be the NES version. I actually have the four-player um, adapter for it, or the wireless one. Uh, maybe I'll make a video of it sometime, but it's pretty cool because it uses the RF, and you put that box down where you're playing, and you can plug in all the controllers since the control cord isn't that long. Um, we are not playing a Waldo game. I like having my eyes and functional. Um, well, let's see what this is. The Immortal. That might be the last game of the night, but we'll give it a shot. The fun part of this is I knew almost nothing about this system growing up. I had the Super Nintendo and Nintendo before that. It was uh, It's nice to just kind of jump around these random games I never played. It's cool to experience. Is this a pinball game? An Arcanoid Breakout game again? New game. Yes, no. Yes. Oh my goodness, it's a new game. And we're in the game. You're a wizard, Harry. An image of the old wizard Mortimer leaps from the candle and begins to speak. It's very hard to read this, but Dunrick, you have come to save me. I am in the dungeon far below. I know I can count on you. This explains your old teacher's mysterious disappearance, but there's one thing strange about the message. Your name is not Dunria. Dunrick. Might be a, what? Okay. So not walk on that little hole. <laughs> Don't walk in a little hole because a sandworm from Dune will come and eat you in one second. Yes, I will take the ring. You found a scroll with fireball spells. Take it. Yes. Can I attack these guys? Okay, so now, don't interfere. Stabity stab stab. I'm a wizard. I'm a wizard. I'm a st oh, whoa, whoa. That's... That's gory. Can I search? Oh, that's gory. <laughs> so confused about this game so far. Stop! Could you come any closer? Okay. Oh, it's a trap. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I mean, graphics are pretty impressive. This game is extremely confusing. So, how do I dodge these things? I can't do anything. I'm just walking slowly. <laughs> wow. Try one more time. Yeah, 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 I got it. Don't walk in the hole on the floor, because that will murder you immediately. Uh, 
I have no idea what's going on. I am pushing buttons because I have no idea what any of the buttons do. Boy, this game is really, really hard. <laughs> I feel I want a palette cleanser, just a standard jump around platformer after this. Yeah, this is just too weird. <laughs> Let's just find a nice, simple uh, platformer, like Lion King. Good one, we'll land on a nice, basic movie tie in platformer. How's that? I don't know that I played the Genesis version, I definitely played the Super Nintendo version. And it's all great until you get to that stupid ostrich race scene. This is later in the lifetime of the Genesis, obviously, because, I mean, this came out probably like, oh, Westwood, huh? And the movie came out in, like, 95. This is 94, yeah, so, I mean, the PS1 launched in 95, so it tells you how late this was. There you go, nice, soothing platformer. I also like the, you know, these platformers, every single thing touches you, hurts you. It's the way it was back then, right? Exploding beetles, you know. You don't remember this part about Lion King? At least they have tight controls then, so... And also high production quality, but I assume it's the same um, group that made the Aladdin game, which the animation style is very similar. As far as quality and fluidity goes. That wasn't the right choice. And there's a cat here now. You already stole my auditor. Are you can take this one too? Secrets here. I remember seeing uh, Lion King when it came out um, on VHS, but there we go. That's a big bug. Uh, and just loving it. I mean, it was. Really good movie, I think it still is. Yeah, I roared at you. Flip over. Or not. <laughs> Hi, cat. You're not helping right now. You are not, in fact, a Lion King. You are a cat. Someone who's watching this now and is like to play this game. It's like, just go there. Why don't you go there? Like, it's a very popular game. So I'm sure enough people have played it, but. There we go. Set up 
played it on Super Nintendo, but that was a long time ago. Sure, I don't have to jump on you for three times. Oh, apparently not. I gotta wait for him to be tired, I'm guessing. Goodness. Yep, there we go. He's out. All right. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Very nice graphics for 94. 16-bit system. Yes, that bonus stage went beautifully. Bugs collected zero. Oh. Yep, there in Simba, the heir of the kingdom, falls into a watery grave. You don't remember that part of the movie? Yep. <laughs> so confusing. Oh, 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 it's the ostrich. Ever played the uh... Mega Man 8. Uh, there is, for a Mega Man game, a, <laughs> like, rocket snowboarding scene. Which is, uh, they basically have a thing where it's like, jump, jump, slide, slide, jump, jump, slide, slide. And that reminded me about that. So, yeah. yeah I think I'm going to call it there for tonight. It's just... Testing on some Genesis games. I'm gonna figure out uh, streaming to get it uh, sharper because I know that it can. It's uh, it looks very sharp right now on the TV and everything with the RetroPie going to the HDMI to component converter and everything. So uh, that was the little showcase for tonight. Just to test it out because I haven't streamed any console games really. And I'll probably mostly stick with streaming uh, old PC games stuff like that. But I want to give it a shot as well. Cause there's a lot of games I never played, never experienced on um, Genesis, so it's fun to explore. And a lot of other consoles, too, that I haven't played much, like TG-16. And and uh, this particular uh, RetroPie has all the good stuff on here. Uh, Sega CD looks really good on it. Uh, of course, Super Nintendo and things like that. But I'm looking at the capture. It doesn't look nearly as sharp as on the TV. So, um, anyway, I'm going to call it there for tonight. So, thanks a lot for watching. And I'm going to try and stream uh, on Wednesday night again. So, I'm going to try and do Wednesday and Saturday. So, we'll see how long I can keep that up. But for now, so uh, thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you next time.